never forget Through all the pain and the sweat The gym and the money I got to keep pressing Got to keep pressing Oh, you know I never forget The gym and the money And all the tears that I met I got to keep pressing Got to keep pressing Now I done slipped and stumbled Grace to you, family. My name is Corey. And I'm Sean. And we want to welcome you to Let's Grow Together. We want to, first of all, thank everyone that, is, that shares our videos, everyone that likes our videos, and everyone that has sown a seed into what it is that God has called us to do in this season. Mm -hmm. uh, for just a little bit tonight, we want to share about the topic of, on the topic of transparency. I want to deal with transparency as it relates to us as Christians being more transparent and men, men being more transparent and men opening up and sharing their feelings. Uh, but let's start it off with you giving a definition of transparency. Okay. What is transparency? Transparency is the condition of being seen through. Transparency implies openness, communication, Good. and accountability. Right. Transparency is when one shows not only their victories, but also their setbacks and, de and defeats. Mm -hmm. The world calls that being real or taking your mask off. Right. And a lot of times what happens is we share our victories, but it's very rare that we share our, defeat mm -hmm. and our defeats. And I want to deal with it, first of all, dealing with the... Christian aspect and us being transparent, us continually walking in the light, us continuing to share our testimonies. And mm -hmm. I want to come from 1 Timothy 1 and 15. Mm -hmm. And this is Paul. He said, this is a trustworthy saying and everyone should accept it. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Mm -hmm. Well, I thought he came that I could have the call of my dreams. I thought he came that I could have the spouse of my dreams, the house of my dreams, or the career of my dreams. But Paul says it here. Not Paul, Paul doesn't say that here. Paul says Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. And guess what Paul begins to do? He begins to get to a place to where he's transparent in his letters. And mm -hmm. he says, and I am the worst of them all. Mm -hmm. And this is Paul, the apostle that we quote. When he's speaking of sinners, he's saying, and I am the worst of of them all. Mm -hmm. Get this. He says, but God had mercy on me so that Christ Jesus could use me mm -hmm. as an example. Yeah. See, I don't know if you know it or not, but I am that example. Right. She's that example. Our marriage is that example. Get this. Example of his great patience mm -hmm. with even the worst sinners. Then others will realize that they too can believe in him and receive eternal life. Paul is saying that God had mercy on him so that he would be an example to other sinners. An example of what? An example of the patience of God. Mm -hmm. An example of the mercy of God. An example of the kindness of God. And a, an example of the love of God. Paul said that God showed mercy on him that he can be an example to sinners. Mm -hmm. So how dare us as Christians hide our testimony? Yeah. How dare us as Christians feel like we're better mm -hmm. than other people. Mm -hmm. In Ephesians 2 and 2, it goes like this. It says, you used to live in sin, mm -hmm. just like the rest of the world, obeying the devil, the commanders of the power of the unseen world. Right. So how dare us look down on people mm -hmm. that are sexing like we used to sex, drinking like we used to drink, smoking like we used to smoke, partying like we used to party. Mm -hmm. We have to remember that we are called into the world to be an example. We're not called into the world to judge people, to look down on people. We are an example of God's patience, God's faithfulness, God's mercy, right. and God's kindness. Mm -hmm. See, our transparency has a purpose. It's more than just telling your business. It's sharing how God has taken us from one place mm -hmm to another place. See, our transparency should communicate to others that no sinner is beyond God's saving power. Mm -hmm. I can remember years ago that when I was incarcerated and I thought that the things I had done in life was so bad that there was no way 
that God would save me. There was no way that God would use me as a preacher. And I never thought back then that I would be in the place that I am in now. Mm -hmm. But it is so that I can be an example of his kindness and mercy. How do I be an example of God's kindness and mercy? One, by telling the testimony of where it is that he brought me from mm -hmm. to where I am now. And it's also showing his kindness, mercy, and patience to others. Right. See, I, I, I deal with it from the standpoint of dealing with saints mm -hmm. because I believe that sometimes we get so caught up. We really do. We get, we get caught up that we sometimes forget about where it is that God has brought us from. Mm -hmm. And I think that sometimes we get, we put ourselves up on a pedestal that God has never put, that, that God hasn't put us on. Mm -hmm. And so what ends up happening is that people that are living in the world, people that are sinners, they begin to see us and be like, and, and make it feel like, and it makes them feel like that we are something that, uh, that is, that is untouchable mm -hmm. or Our the place, family. right. Or the place that we at or, or is a place that that's, it's hard to up, obtain. Mm -hmm. So we want to make sure that we remember as the saints that God has shown patience with us, that we may be an example unto others. Mm -hmm. Now that's dealing with saints, but now I want to get into something that's really dealing with the men because okay. I mean I'm pretty sure that everybody out there is agreeing I'm not broad stroking it I'm not saying all men but men we we struggle sometimes with being transparent mm -hmm. we, as men we 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 struggle sometimes opening up and sharing with others. The scripture says it like this, that it's not good for man to be alone. And the truth of the matter is, you can be a part of a football team and still be alone. You can be the leader of a large congregation and still be alone. You can have a large loving family and still feel like you're all alone. Mm -hmm. See, if you don't have anyone that you can be transparent with or transparent in front of or open with, then you're alone. Mm -hmm. And see, what happens is a lot of men are suffering and they're surrounded by others, but they're still alone. See, you may say, well, I still have God. Well, Adam had God, but God still said that it's not good for man to be alone. Right. So we must, as men, we must begin to get to a place to where we're open to be transparent and we're open to share. So I wrote down a few reasons right here why men aren't transparent mm -hmm. and why men won't open up. The number one reason, and a lot of these other ones are rooted in that, mm -hmm. the number one reason why men don't open up and men are not transparent is because of pride. Mm -hmm. That's number one. Number two, it makes us feel vulnerable. Mm -hmm. You know, kind of one of the things that me and you were talking about as we were going over our notes earlier, that every time that you are transparent, every time that you are open, mm -hmm. every time that you share something that you don't, don't, you don't normally share with people, it makes you feel vulnerable. Mm -hmm. Number three, lack of trust. Sometimes men don't share because they don't know who to share with. Mm -hmm. They don't they don't trust the place. They don't they don't know where the safe place is. Mm -hmm. uh, fear of facing judgment. Mm -hmm. Number four, they feels like they feel like that if I share with somebody that they're going to judge me. Number five, fear of facing what's down on the inside. Sometimes you don't want to face the things that you're dealing with. Mm -hmm. So uh, so that's a reason why men are not transparent and don't open up. Uh, sometimes you don't want to share because the, the, the few times you did share, you never saw any results in it. And then sometimes as men, we don't share. And I don't know if women know this, but sometimes we don't share with our spouse thinking that later on, they're going to go back and use it against us. Mm -hmm. You have any thoughts on that? Um, I really have something to say about number two. Okay. Number two is it makes us feel vulnerable. Uh -huh. And that word vulnerable, when I read that, it makes us feel vulnerable. I think about um, when you're vulnerable, you, you decide that you're going to take a risk. Wow. And so a lot of times we are not transparent with, with other people because we don't want to take the risk of those people not receiving us anymore once they find out something about us that we've that we haven't shown before right so whenever you decide to be vulnerable what you're saying is i've weighed out the two keeping this inside or showing it to others and i've decided that i'm going to show it to others right. outweighs what their decision is going to be about me after they know right and so when you decide to be vulnerable you just say i'm going to take a risk right it is what it is right and so i think that a lot of times men 
may decide that they are not going to be vulnerable because they can't handle rejection. Mm. I think that's what that's what number two steps at. It, you know, it just shows me that men have a problem with. If you see, just look at look at it practically in relationships. A lot of times, women can deal with infidelity and things like that. But when a man has to deal with it, it's far greater. They can't handle that rejection. They can't handle that. Um, they can't get past it. And so I think that that um, that's one of the reasons why men um, decide not to be vulnerable. And then this one right here, Which number. Number seven, uh -huh. thinking that your, your spouse will use it one day against use you. Use it against you, and that uh -huh. goes back into fighting fair. Uh -huh. Because we, we talked about that. Once we decide to sit down and discuss something, you can't use something that I opened up to you about you as, as uh -huh. a weapon against me that now make, that we're that makes a man argument. That makes a man not open up anymore. That's right. Yeah. And so... so um, that's one reason I can I can understand why a man decides not to be transparent. Right, right. But but what what's happening is, you know, uh, men are really suffering in silence. Mm -hmm. And see, we must understand that Satan doesn't like transparency. He loves darkness. He loves dark secrets that kill you slowly. Mm -hmm. Satan operates in the darkness. So he wants men to hold that thing, those things in that they're dealing with. Mm -hmm. And transparency, see what transparency does is it brings things to the light. light. That's right. And see the enemy doesn't like light. He's mm -hmm. in the kingdom of darkness. He operates in darkness. Mm -hmm. He op operates in dark places. So therefore, he wants to keep men and keep their issues hid and mm -hmm. keep them in dark so he can go to work on mm -hmm. you. See, a lot of times, even when men commit suicide, when somebody commits suicide, you just be like, wow, they were so normal. Mm -hmm. I didn't know what was going on with them. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of times, as men, we hold stuff in and don't let people know that we're going we'll through. Mm -hmm. A lot of times with mental illness. Mm -hmm. And like I had said in one of these, that uh, fear of facing what's down inside. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of people in the African-American community, female and male mm -hmm. that don't normally share stuff, uh, uh, share what they're dealing with deep down inside because they really feel like what well, truth be truth be told, they know that they may have some type of form, no, some form of mental illness, mm -hmm. and they don't want to face it because in the black community it's shunned upon. Yes. So what happens is instead of men sharing it, they just toughen up mm -hmm. and just begin to press their way through it when everything around them is falling. Mm -hmm. And then also a lot of times, this is for men and women. A lot of times um, they're not transparent because you, because being transparent causes you to give up some level of power. Okay. Being transparent uh, causes you to release your power of controlling narratives. See, okay. as long as I'm not transparent, then I can kind of control the narrative of what you think about me. Wow. But That's when good. I decide to be transparent, I'm releasing that power. Now you make the decision about what you think about me. Right, right. But 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 when dealing with me and see, we must understand that our order is set in heaven mm -hmm. and who we are as the Godhead. Mm -hmm. So if I be transparent, if I be vulnerable, mm -hmm. that doesn't that doesn't change who I am in, the, right. in, in, in my household right. or in the eyes of but God. But see, that's the trick of the enemy. That's the trick, that's of, the the enemy. trick of the enemy to make mm -hmm. you think that once you you're open losing up, your masculinity you're, and you're with your vulnerability. That's right. You're losing your place. You're losing your prestige. You're, you're losing whatever. Uh, perception people have of right, you, right. and that's that's a trick of the enemy. That's not true. Right, and, and let's go back a little bit to what we were talking about: the mental illness aspect. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of people in the black community that are suffering from mental illness, mm -hmm. and they don't want to face it. Mm -hmm. They don't want to talk to anybody about it. They don't want to uh, go and see a doctor. And, you know, T.D. Jake said something one day, and I thought that it was very powerful. Mm -hmm. He says, we separate the head from the body. And what he was saying is, you know, if something's wrong with your heart, you go to the doctor. Something's wrong with your knee, you go to the doctor. But if something is wrong in your mind or something's, if something's wrong in your head, which is your mind, then what happens is we just tough it through. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't go to the doctor for it when we must understand that certain things have been put in place by God, mm -hmm. 
doctors, uh, counselors, medication, things have been put in place that God, by God, and they've been given to doctors that we can go to that can help us and make us whole. And it doesn't make you any less of a person right. for, for uh, going to seek out help for a doctor when it comes to mental illness. But one thing I can say about that is um, going and seeking out help for mental illness can be a fearful thing. Right. Because like you said, you'll go see about your doctor, You, I mean your knee, you'll go right. see about your uh, your hand, your finger. But one thing about our mind is it's, what, it's the one thing that we're with all day long. Right. And we feel like we control what we think. Right. We control that. We don't have control over any other part of our body. We control our mind. So we think. So we think. Right. So whenever you come to a place where you feel like I have to see somebody to help me because this this thing that I'm thinking with, there's something wrong with it, that can be very scary. Oh, it can be and very scary. And so it scary. causes a lot of people to know within themselves that something's not right. I need to seek help. But the fear of yeah. of the answer that they're going to get fear. Is, mm -hmm. is keeping them from seeking out that right. kind of medical But see, that fear is a stronghold That's right. that keeps you in a place to where the devil can continue to rob mm -hmm. your life mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and rob you from the life mm -hmm. that God has for you. The Bible says that the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy, but God has came, Christ has came, that you shall have life and have it more abundantly. That's right. It's hard to have an abundant life when you're suffering mentally. That's right. And we want to encourage you today that if you're one of those people that feel like like something's just not right and you've been suffering throughout the years we want to encourage you today through mm -hmm. the spirit of god to first of all seek god that's right and after you seek god in prayer we ask that you seek professional help share with somebody even if it's not professional help Share with somebody, this is how I've been feeling. Mm -hmm. God wants to liberate you today. God has sent us to give you this message, to let you know that you don't have to suffer. That's and see, right. like we said, transparency, it brings things to light. Mm -hmm. There's been so many times to where I've gotten into a circle of men. Mm -hmm. And what ends up happening is, as I begin to talk about what I'm going through and another man begins to talk about what he's going through, then guess what? We begin to get liberated because what we figure out is, you know what? The same trick mm -hmm. that the devil is running on you mm -hmm. is the same he's trick me. he's trying to run on me. That's right. Or that's the trick that he ran on me last year. But if you never get in a brotherhood, if mm -hmm. you never get around men, because I believe that men need men. Mm -hmm. If you never get around men to, to share what it is you're going through to be transparent to open up then the enemy that is destroying your life mm -hmm. that is destroying your marriage mm -hmm. that is destroying your finances mm -hmm. it would never be exposed That's right. and so a lot of times it's exposed in an atmosphere of transparency mm -hmm. when you're sitting amongst other men mm -hmm. that's why the bible says it's not good for man to be yeah. alone and we don't always feel like we can share with our spouse mm -hmm. now in our closing, I just want to go with John 12 and 14. This is Jesus. He says, I have come as, as a light to shine in this dark world so that all who put their trust in me would no longer remain in the dark. The Lord desires that you not remain in the dark, that you no longer remain in the cave of depression, hurt, and everything, uh, uh, whether it's sin, whether it's mental illness, whether it's fears, whether it's thoughts of suicide. Mm -hmm. I want you to know that deliverance, mm, I feel the Holy Ghost, deliverance is right under your nose. You say deliverance is right un under my nose. The Bible says that life and death is in the power of the tongue. Right. This is more than just speaking life over yourself. This is about finding somebody that you can trust and share with them what it is you're going through. How am I going to get my deliverance? You're going to get your deliverance by sharing with the right person what it is that you are going through. Mm -hmm. Life and death is in the power of the tongue. I want to encourage you today. I want to encourage men today. I know I started off with the saints, but I want to encourage men today. Talk to somebody. Mm -hmm. Open up to somebody. Sometimes deliverance cannot be found in your comfort zone, but outside of your That's comfort right. zone. That's and right. sometimes we don't want to go outside of our comfort zone to get the deliverance because mm -hmm. we feel like we know what will and won't work for, for us. us. And right. I had a friend of mine and he was dealing with a situation and he was thinking about going 
to a class and you know he was like man that's the kind of stuff that I really don't you know mm -hmm. I really don't do you know yeah. and so I told him sometimes your deliverance is outside of your comfort zone right. outside of the things that you are you used are to and mm -hmm. the reason why you haven't got deliverance is because you will never leave from outside of your perimeters yeah. you won't leave from outside of the places you have influence I mean to where you, yeah where you have influence so what ends up happening is we end up self medicating ourselves mm -hmm. self medicating ourselves with alcohol self medicating ourselves through drugs self medicating ourselves through uh pride pride through is self medication yep, yep 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 so so we end up self medicating ourselves even through sex that's what i was looking mm -hmm. for we look for different outlets Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. To uh, of self uh, uh, to self medicate ourselves, but God wants to deliver you. Mm -hmm. God has a plan for your life, and guess what? Healing is the children's bread. Now we believe, we believe, I, I, and I'm a firm believer that God can deliver you instantly. Mm -hmm. But some of us, He does deliver inst instantly, and then other people, He has a deliverance process for us. So. We don't know where you are, but I want you to know that deliverance is right under your nose. Mm -hmm. You need to just find someone that you can share with what it is you're going through. Mm -hmm. I'm asking you, don't suffer in the dark. Don't die slowly. We just want to, you know, we just want to share a little bit on transparency. Um, I think that I may continue next week on transparency because there has to be a wisdom mm -hmm. that goes with transparency. It don't mean that you get in every setting and just share everything, everything. that That's you're right. going through. There's right. definitely a wisdom that comes with being transparent, and I may share on it next week. I'm going to see what the Lord has to say, and you know we're going to go whichever way that God wants us to go. Mm -hmm. And you have the Wife Lounge coming up, right? Yes. So the Wife's Lounge is set for September the... I got the date. Yeah, I get, get the, the date, date too. We'll get back with you. I get the date to you, but it'll be the first, um, the first Saturday. Right. No, the second Saturday in September. Right. And so right. I'll uh, be getting that information out to you, ladies, as soon as we nail down everything. Yep, so get all of your friends together. It's going to be powerful. The last one was very powerful. This is something that the Lord has placed on my wife's heart just to be a blessing. To wives, and I thank I thank God for the vision that He has given it to you, and I ask that He's given to you, and I ask that y'all support my wife, and I promise you will be blessed by it. They're gonna have a dy she's gonna have a dynamic speaker, and she's gonna bless y'all with a word from heaven. Last time y'all gave away gifts, mm -hmm. y'all giving away gifts this time. Yes. Okay. Are yes. men invited? Because I would like a few of the gifts. No. <laughs> <laughs> So it's just for wives. Just for wives. Okay. Well, what what about single women? Are they invited? No, no, no not this one. They not were invited one. to the last one. Okay. Um, but this one is not. Okay. This and this is a place of what healing. It's a place of healing, restoration, a place to be uh to be vulnerable and transparent. Um, like you said, there is a, a wisdom that comes along with that, but it is a place where you can open you can be up open. and. Yeah. And um, it's a safe place. It's, it's a safe place. It's not a place where we, we're not coming together to bash our husbands. Wow. We're coming together to, to learn more about ourselves wow. and what we can do to change some situations in our marriage. Wow. Wow. That's powerful. So, you know, you can find all that information on our Facebook. You'll find it on the date. Uh, you'll find the date and we'll, and we'll be releasing flowers what, mm -hmm. sometime this week. Yeah. Okay, so we want to thank everybody for tuning in today to Let's Grow Together. Until the next time, I'm Corey. And I'm Sean. And we love you. You know I never forget Through all the pain and the sweat